Hello, my name is Michael Alonzo, and the group of diseases that I'll be discussing is titled Viral Hemorrhagic Fevers. This is my outline, and as you can see, first I'll be discussing the general information. Then I'll go into the, specific, the three specific viruses that I, that I researched, which are Ebola, Marburg, and Lassa. Then I'll discuss the experiment that I found. I'll go over key points, show you my bibliography, then open the floor up for questions and comments. So, first of all, you might have noticed how in my introduction I stated that viral hemorrhagic fevers is not one single virus, but is rather a group of viruses. This is because viral hemorrhagic fevers refer to a group of distinct viruses that, are all, that all have severe multisystem syndrome side effects. And what multisystem syndromes are is, is, is it is any disease that, has, that affects multiple systems in the body. There are four different families of viruses that make up viral hemorrhagic fevers. And they are labeled Vivo virus, Flavia virus, Arena virus, and Bunyan virus. First of all, the fever virus mainly affects humans and non-human primates. As you can see in this picture, it usually is a U, it usually appears in a U shape. And the only two examples of this virus are Ebola virus and Marburg virus, both of which I will be going over in this presentation. The next family of virus is Flavin virus. They are found in anthrops, and what an anthrop is is, is um, organisms such as ticks fleas, and mosquitoes. Two examples of flavin viruses are West Nile fever and dengue fever. As you can see in this picture, they usually form in clumps. The virus usually forms in clumps. The third family of virus is arena virus. These diseases are really transmitted, and two examples are Lassa virus and Jenner virus. As you can see in this picture, the shape of the virus is dome, is sort of dome shaped. This is where it gets its name. The fourth and final family of virus that makes up viral hemorrhagic fevers are Bunyan virus. This is the largest family, and it does not only affect humans and animals, but also infects plants. Two examples of Bunyan viruses are Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever and Rift Valley fever. Now I'll go into the first disease that I researched specifically, Ebola hemorrhagic fever. First off, Ebola is a filovirus and it has a 90% fatality rate. There are five known types of Ebola. Zaire Ebola virus, Sudan virus, Thai forest virus, Bundingbo virus, and Reston Ebola virus. The only difference between these viruses are where they were discovered and slight variations in their genetic makeup. The initial symptoms to Ebola are fever, headache, joint muscle ache, weakness, diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pain, and lack of appetite. When the disease reaches its advanced stages, the virus infects the host cells. This causes the tissue and cells in the body to be destroyed and essentially liquefied. This process is called hemorrhaging. And hemorrhaging is the deterioration of the body's tissue resulting in bleeding. Hemorrhaging leads to vomiting blood, organ failure, and blood loss. And organ failure and blood loss is what mainly people die from when they have Ebola. Symptoms start 2 to 21 days after infection, and death occurs 7 to 16 days after incubation. The way Ebola is transmitted is through contact with animals, such as apes and other humans, and contact with infected fluid such as how if you touch the vomit of someone who has Ebola, you will get infected, or the blood of someone who has Ebola. There is no vaccine and no cure for Ebola currently. Though if you go to the hospital and say that you have Ebola, what they will do is they will keep you hydrated and they will, they will replenish lost body fluids. While hydration and replenishing lost body fluids will not essentially cure the disease, it will prolong your life when you have the disease. The only way to prevent having getting Ebola virus is to avoid infected people and animals. The second disease that I went in depth with was Marburg hemorrhagic fever. Marburg hemorrhagic fever is, an Ebola, is a filovirus like Ebola and has a fatality rate less than Ebola at 
Outbreaks occur all over the world, but are most prevalent in Africa and Europe. In fact, the first out known outbreak of Marburg happened in Germany in 1976. And it happened in Marburg, Germany, which is where it got its name from. The initial symptoms are fever, severe headache, joint muscle ache, chills, sore throat, and weakness. The severe symptoms are organ failure, dehydration, internal bleeding, and internal bleeding. This disease has a three to seven day incubation period, and death usually occurs seven to 10 days after the incubation. People who die from Marburg usually die from blood loss or organ failure. The way that Ebola is transmitted is through fruit bats, or the scientific name being Rosettus agite. And fruit bat, what would happen is fruit bats would bite the bite a human and infect them with the virus. And the other way to get Ebola, to get Marburg violet virus, is to come in contact with infected fluids. There is currently no cure and no vaccine for Marburg virus, and the only way to Treat it is to replenish lost body fluids and stay hydrated. Again, this will not completely cure the virus, but will prolong your life. The only way to prevent getting Ebola is to avoid bats and caves, because that's the way it's transmitted. And if bitten by a bat, get tested, because early detection of this disease is crucial if you want to live. Something that both Ebola and Marburg had in common is that they were both, both tested out to be by weapons. This, occurred, this research occurred during the Cold War era, and it was done by Soviet scientists. They used fuel viruses such as Ebola and Marburg. But Ebola was not able to be grown in, lab, in a lab setting, so they instead used the Marburg virus. What they did was they adapted the, they adapted the genes of the virus so that it is now able to be transmitted through air. But it was never, even though the technology has been developed, it was never used in actual warfare. The third and final disease that I had, that I had researched was Lassa hemorrhagic fever. This is an arena virus, has a fatality rate less than Ebola and Marburg at only 50%, and is most common in Africa. The initial symptoms are fever, headache, sore throat, cough, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. The severe symptoms are internal, ble internal bleeding, dehydration, and organ failure. The incub incubation period is three to seven days, and death occurs usually seven to 10 days after incubation. What people die from mostly when they have loss of hemorrhagic fever is internal bleeding and organ failure. This is an arena virus, which means it is transmitted through rodents. And the, uh, the other way you can get this disease is through contact with an infected person. There is a, there is a treatment for this disease, which is called ribavirin, and it is an antiviral drug. The, full, the cost for a full treatment is $13,200. And the only way to prevent getting, a, to, be, to, prevent, to prevent loss of virus is to avoid rats. So now I'm going to experiment. The scientist that conducted this experiment was T.W. Geisberg, and the objective was to develop an accurate detection method. Because before this experiment, it was very, it was very hard to, de to detect which viral hemorrhagic fever a person is infected with, and it is um, hard to detect if they have it at all until it is too late. So what this scientist used was RT-PCR, which is reverse transcriptase polymer chain reaction, which is a method for detecting specific RNA strands. They used a dye called Cyber Green to, to tag these specific RNA viruses. This method was tested on rats, and it proved successful in determining the type of viral hemorrhagic fever they had and the fact that they had it at all. This, again, this experiment made, made it possible to detect viral hemorrh hemorrhagic fevers early. And this is crucial because early detection has proven to increase the survival rate for some viral hemorrhagic fevers. So here are my key points. First off, it is a multi-system disease, which means that it infects multiple systems in your body. Second, there are four families of viral hemorrhagic fevers. 
filovirus, plasmavirus, arenavirus, and bunyate virus. Third, the three examples of viral compromised fevers are Ebola, Marburg, and Lassa, all three of which I have discussed in this presentation. And lastly, uh, um, a detection method was found by the scientists in my experiment. Here's my bibliography, and now any questions and comments. Um, mainly because the species of animals that transmit the disease live there, and also here um, for the, the poor hygienic situation in some part of Africa. Jordan? Can you be affected by fevers too? Yes. If a human like throws up on you or coughs on you when they have the Ebola virus, um, then you can get infected because it is transmitted through contact with bodily fluids of someone who is infected. Awesome. Um, can the Lhasa virus be spread by animals other than rats? Or? Other than rats? Well, in my research, they said that the main um, vector is rats, but it can also be spread by human contact with humans, so I think that's mainly it. Um, um, you said that for the number of the virus, it's um, spread by bats, and so then you said that if you're bitten by a bat, you should get tested. And so if the test is positive, what do you do? You just like be lucky because you said there's no treatment. Well, for a Marburg virus, well, what they can do is that um, they'll get, uh, meet you to the hospital and then they'll start like monitoring you, replacing the lost body fluids, trying to stabilize your situation, and maybe, yes, you can get lucky and survive. And, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Jazz hands.